Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home and welcome to another entry in my home video history series. In today's video, we're gonna be covering a horror masterpiece, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> In this video, I'll be taking you through the entire history of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on home video, starting with the earliest Super 8 Laserdisc and VHS releases, all the way up to the latest Blu-ray and 4K UHD releases from 2023. While the Texas Chainsaw Massacre spawned many sequels, they don't have quite the history that the original film has. So for the purposes of this video, we're gonna focus on the original 1974 film. I am also gonna focus primarily on releases from the United States, but I will cover some of the interesting international releases in that history where it's applicable. So let's dive into the world of Leatherface and the Sawyer family as we explore the unique home video history of one of the horror genre's most well-known and influential films. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was originally released in theaters in the fall of 1974. On a small budget of just $140,000, the film brought in over $30 million at the box office, a whopping 214 times its budget, making it one of the first low-budget horror successes. However, the film's release also came with serious controversy, which would affect the home video releases for years to come. While director Toby Hooper had hoped for a PG rating due to the lack of on-screen gore, the original cut was actually given an X rating by the MPAA in the United States. A subsequent cut was given an R rating in the US, but some other countries were not as accepting. The movie was banned in the UK one year after its release in Brazil, Chile, Finland, France, Iceland, Ireland, Norway, Singapore, Sweden, and West Germany all banned the film for a period of time. The first home video release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre came in 1978 in the form of a shortened Super 8 release. It was just just 21 minutes long and was released by Ivor Film Services on a 400 foot Super 8 reel. Given the size of the reel, this abridged version of the movie was the best that consumers could get for home viewing until 1982. In 1982, the first full-length home video releases of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre hit store shelves in the U.S. on both the VHS and Betamax formats. These were released by Wizard Video, which was owned by B-movie producer Charles Band. You may know Charles Band because he later went on to found Full Moon Productions. Interestingly enough, these tapes list an 86-minute runtime, but that is due to extra content that Charles Band became known for adding to the end of his tapes, usually a theatrical trailer, which became some of the first special features. As far as anyone knows, the uncut, unedited final version of the film is 83 minutes long. However, the UK cuts of the film are only 80 minutes in runtime due to PAL speed up, which is the practice of, well, speeding up 24 frames per second film content to play back at the standard PAL frame rate of 25 frames per second, which also brings us to some interesting releases in the UK that I want to cover as a short sidetrack. In the early 80s, likely between 1982 and 1984, Ivor Film Services, the company that released the Super 8 version of the film, put out two uncensored VHS releases of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the UK, one of which has my favorite artwork on any of the releases listed in this video. However, this would be the last time the uncensored version was released in the UK until 1998 due to the censorship put in place by the British Film Board. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre became a video nasty in the UK and many of those other countries I previously listed. In fact, up until 2011, the film was still banned in Germany, which is just crazy. Now in 1983, Wizard Video would also release the first Laserdisc of the film in partnership with Vestron Video. This version featured the Laserdisc extended play technology and stereo sound, but was still limited to the full screen aspect ratio of 133 to 1, more commonly known as 4-3. Wizard Video and Vestron would also release the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on CED in 1983, which is likely one of the rarest releases of the film given the format's short life and the U.S. market. In fact, the only one I could find on eBay was an autographed copy for $3,000. After these releases, the home video rights for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre changed hands. Media Home Entertainment, a very popular label in the early days of VHS, took over the rights and put out their own VHS release in 1984. This release was the same as the previous VHS tapes, although it did feature a bottom flap on the packaging, essentially encasing the tape completely inside a cardboard box, whereas most VHS tapes featured an open bottom. In the late 80s, Media Home Entertainment would re-release the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 
Oscar under their Video Treasures label. This VHS isn't really noteworthy, but it does feature some unique artwork that wouldn't be seen again until the German 4K UHD release in 2022. The next time the film would be released was in 1993 when the rights changed hands to MPI Media, who still hold the film's home media rights to this day. In 1993, MPI released both a new VHS and a new Laserdisc, touting the restored, uncut, and unedited version of the film. However, the film still ran at 83 minutes, so I'm not entirely sure what was uncut and unedited about it, although it does appear that it had been restored to a higher quality video scan that was supervised by Toby Hooper, according to the Laserdisc database. However, while restored, it was still presented in open mat 4.3, so no widescreen yet. As a side note, I actually own the sealed 1993 VHS in my collection, and it is one of my favorite pieces. 1993 would actually mark the last VHS release of the movie, but it did get one more Laserdisc release in 1996 as part of a joint effort between MPI Media and Elite Entertainment Incorporated. This was the first time the film had been released in letterboxed widescreen. In 1998, the first DVD release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre hit stores from Pioneer in partnership with MPI Media. This release featured a quote-unquote super scan widescreen video transfer and a new stereo surround audio track that were both approved by Toby Hooper and previously seen on the 1996 Laserdisc release. This DVD was a significant upgrade over the previous VHS releases of the film and it also included special features like deleted scenes, blooper reels, and audio commentaries. In 2003, Pioneer and MPI released a new DVD package that features some of the horror collector's favorite all-time packaging for the movie. This special edition was available in a metal pack, which is sort of like the first steelbooks and featured artwork with packaged ground meat on the back of the case. This was certainly an interesting take on the artwork, but outside of that, this DVD featured the same audio and video transfers from the previous 1998 DVD release. There was also a standard edition released in 2003 that did not include the metal pack packaging or the unique ground meat artwork and was a pretty standard DVD. In 2006, the film was released for the final time on DVD with a limited edition steelbook package. This was also the first ever high definition transfer of the film that was released to home video, although for DVD it had to be downscaled to DVD's 480p resolution. This release also featured newly remastered 5.1 DTS surround sound and a lossless 2.0 PCM audio track. The transfer was completed by scanning the original 16mm film elements and this was the cleanest the movie had appeared to home audiences yet. This steelbook also included a second disc with additional special features that included two documentaries, deleted scenes, and a tour of the house from the movie with star Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface. This same HD transfer from MPI would serve as the base for the first Blu-ray release in 2008, the Ultimate Edition, which followed two years after that DVD steelbook. This release showed off the new transfer in full HD and carried over the same audio tracks and special features from the 2006 DVD steelbook. However, all of those features were on one single disc as the expanded storage space of the Blu-ray format allowed for more content on one disc. However, this transfer soon lagged behind other movies on Blu-ray as it featured lossy surround sound in DVD era video compression. So the film was already due for another remaster as soon as it got a Blu-ray release. Now, six years later in 2014, we got our new remaster. This is when MPI released the first ever 4K transfer of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre for the film's 40th anniversary under their label Dark Sky Films. As the 4K UHD format had not yet been launched, 1080p Blu-ray was the highest quality this 4K transfer could be seen in. This release also upgraded the audio to a DTS HD 7.1 lossless audio track and added AVC video compression, which had become the standard for Blu-ray by this time. For this 40th anniversary, MPI and Dark Sky Films went all out on packaging. The DVD was fairly standard standard, but the Blu-ray options were very cool. There was a 40th anniversary collector's edition that came with an awesome slipcase featuring Leatherface in the doorway to the meat cellar, ready to pounce. This edition packaged
launched a second Blu-ray disc loaded with new special features that the standard Blu-ray release did not receive. I actually had this slipcase version in my collection, and up until I upgraded to 4K, this was one of my favorite horror movies in my Blu-ray collection. They also released a limited edition package in the shape of the tractor trailer from the end of the film called The Black Maria. This set included the same materials from the two disc slipcase, but added a 40th anniversary mini poster, as well as a third disc which featured a conversation between legendary director William Friedkin, who is of the Exorcist fame, and Toby Hooper discussing the Texas Chainsaw Massacre together. In 2018, MPI and Dark Sky Films would re-release this 4K mastered Blu-ray disc in steelbook packaging with all of the same audio and video as the 2014 Blu-ray. The new steelbook art enticed collectors, but honestly, by 2018, everyone was waiting for that 4K UHD release. And in 2022, we finally got our wish. Now, interestingly enough, the first 4K UHD release of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre actually dropped in Italy in 2018, but it did not include HDR, though it did have Dolby Atmos. There was also a 2019 German release, which had the same video minus the HDR, but the first proper 4K UHD release, in my opinion, came in 2022 when Turbine Media, a German media company, released several variants of a limited edition steelbook release of the film. Now, think back, remember how Germany banned this film for so long? Very ironic that they were the first ones to give it a proper 4K release. Now, this release featured Dolby Atmos audio like those previous ones, but it added Dolby Vision HDR and HDR10, marking this as the first time the film had received the full 4K upgrade treatment with all of the technical goodies. This release did use the same 2014 4K transfer that Toby Hooper supervised and was previously released on the 10 1080p Blu-ray, but it did add that new audio track and it added new HDR color grading. In 2023, two more releases of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre hit the shelves, or by this time, the virtual shelves, including the first US release of the film on 4K from MPI Media and Dark Sky Films. Dark Sky released both a slipcover edition and a steelbook edition, with the slipcover featuring new artwork and the steelbook using the original poster art. Now, personally, I went with the steelbook because I do love that original original poster art and the steelbook included a mini poster that featured both the original art and the new art that's on the slipcover. This release features the same transfer as the Turbine Media release, but it may have some slight differences in compression and or color grading. Finally, in April of 2023, Second Sight Films in the UK released their own limited edition 4K Blu-ray box set for this film, complete with art cards, brand new packaging and artwork, and a huge book full of essays and information about the film. Now, Second Sight didn't just revamp the packaging, they also did additional restoration work, which included another pass at the HDR color grade and some real improvements there with Dolby Vision, as well as some additional cleanup of the film print. Now, none of these current 4K releases are bad by any means. They all look fantastic, but if you're looking for the grimier, grindhouse look and feel that a lot of you are probably used to with this movie, then the Dark Sky Films and MPI Media Transfer is probably going to be the one you like the best. If you want the most advanced technology in the absolute best restoration possible, I think that's what Second Sight gave us. They did some new color grade, which looks incredible. The colors pop. The additional cleanup was really nice. It's a beautiful presentation, but it may be a little bit different from what the purists and hardcore fans out there are used to. So my advice would be to go online, look at some comparisons. I did my own video breakdown between the two and make your decision. There's other things to consider like packaging, but no matter what, you can't really go wrong with this film on 4K. It looks fantastic no matter which release you pick up.